Okay, we're starting. Hit it. Yeah. Get your appetite ready for barbecue yum, 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 yum. banter from backyards to across the globe. Talking about techniques, recipes, and ideas from novice to expert. With your host, Mike Barber and Mr. Know It All. It's time to make it low and slow, y'all. What the heck are you doing, Mike? Nothing. Just cutting some cheese. So that looked really good for Mr. Know-It-All. I'd like for you to define what you just did. I just trying to help Piggy. Little Piggy. Oh, this is our cheese segment. Yes. That's why you're making that noise, yeah. everybody. Good one. Sorry for all you children. The, yeah, it's okay. Oh, excuse me. Oh, and... Oh, let's... let's little Piggy, look at you. This is... This is what? It's not a vacuum seal. Yes, it is. Actually, it's a vacuum seal for a cow or a big animal. I'm just... In uh, smaller portions. Well, it's probably more protective from getting pregnant. Yeah. Um, Something to talk about. No, later. actually, no, it's yeah. a vacuum sealing for, for your cheese. That we'll, we'll deal with that, too. Yes, we will. We'll talk about that. What's up? What's going on the barbecue banter uh, menu today, okay. buddy? So today we're going to go through a couple things. We're yes. going to go through uh, the smoking of cheese. That We have a video for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to try some cheese because we have it here. Oh, oh, oh everybody. Oh, so I've got Gouda from, what do we got for August of last year, y'all? And we're going to get into that and why you can keep it so long and it gets better and better. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. then we're going to talk about vacuum sealing. Yes. So we'll give people some information on that. A little bit and of everything here. Yeah. And then we're going to do our teaser for our next show, mm -hmm. which is another food truck that we went to, which is a Greek food truck in Hampton again. Oopa. Um, yeah. So there's Tikare. 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 My old days working with the Greeks. I had to cut some of the few words that were spread around. I know. You guys were the food I, truck. I learned the swear words in Greek oh. as well, but I won't get into that today. Okay, so let's get yeah. some trivia here. Yes. All right. So cheese, Mr. everybody, no and some people know this stuff. There's sort of, there's always, a, I guess, an unknown of when cheese actually was recorded as being invented mm -hmm. uh, around 8,000 8, BC. Mm -hmm. and, wow. And yeah, a long way time ago. back. Cool. Oh, a lot of birthdays. Uh, when first were first domesticated, and this is the weird stuff. Is rennet is the enzyme used to make cheese today, mm -hmm. um, and today it's actually naturally produced in the stomachs of a lot of four-legged animals with little hoofs. We're talking about we're getting deep here, stomachs and all, right? <laughs> okay. All right, what, that's deep. What I don't understand is how did somebody know to make cheese eight thousand BC? Oh, I'm going to take the innards of a cow and I'm going to put milk in it and I'm going to make Jeez, wow. what, the, what did they have? No spare time? Yeah, probably. This is going to make some good trivia. Oh, man. Okay, so this is trivia stuff. On to that note. Yes. There's a bacteria that gives cheese its smell, unique smell. That I knew. The same bacteria, which is uh, actually called, what is it here now? Uh, Brevi. Brevi. Mm-hmm is the same that creates the smell on your feet. Can I can I interrupt here, Mike, on that? It's it's I think it's something to do with what you just mentioned to everybody out there. And this turns Lisa, my girlfriend, off. I am a cheese nut as everybody knows. And when the cheese sits in the fridge, guys, and it'll sort of grow some of you out and you won't That's do it and right. then there's the people with the stronger stomachs like me. You get mold on cheese, right? I'll cut the mold off, Mike, on my cheese, if it, if it ever happens. It's rare, but when it does, and that cheese is better and stronger. And that's the whole purpose, if you know about why people say moldy cheese. And they'll, they'll eat. That's where penicillin came from. That, and you know what? I'm healthy 
from a lot of penicillin because I ate a lot of moldy cheese when I was younger. But we, that's another okay, story. Okay, we're not talking about your health right now. I know, or, I know, I know. Anyways, go on. And, and, Tell everybody. And, and, and some procedure you might have to have done. What's next? Um, okay, the so uh, the most expensive cheese, mm. guess what kind of animal it comes from? I have no idea, that's but you're so going to tell us. Uh, Siberian donkey. What? It's called a, I guess it's Puel. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay, Puel, like P-U-L-E? Yes. A donkey. $600 a pound. Wow. I wonder and, what that tastes like. I don't know. It takes about 100 donkeys, are milked, <laughs> to make enough. And the cheese is smoked after as well, which oh, is what you're doing today. I love that. Oh, Smoke everything, I tell you. Did you know? And this is this is one of these fruit pods. Mm-hmm. Mice don't actually like cheese. No. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, much for all the cartoons. They they'd rather prefer food that is higher in sugar. So that's kind of a weird thing. I always thought. I was. Like, I thought mice know. loved. Well, you think you put them on their traps? Yes. But I remember actually, we had mice in our house when we were poor. The poor family, we had been, you know, little mice going in and out. There was a couple of times, I'm sure everybody's house had one at one time. But yeah, I don't think we put cheese on the trash. Rats and mice really prefer, I'm going to that house because they're poor. No, that's the, uh, understandable. They're, they're, we've actually, in this area, mice in, are coming in, out in, from in the Durham fields. Region, the yeah. last couple of years, we've had a big rat problem. Okay. We've caught a few. We're in the rats now, sorry. Okay. Uh, what else here? Um,. That was loud. I got that one. There are more than 2,000 varieties of <laughs> cheese worldwide. Wow. Mozzarella mm-hmm. is actually the favorite around the globe and the most consumed. Mm. Kind of the first I cheese factory. That. Yeah. Mozzarella. Mozzarella. Pizza. It's almost Italian. You got to say mozzarella. I always wanted to, I wanted to say cheese is like Italian because I think of pizza. But you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the first cheese factory was established in Switzerland in 1815. Oh, That's a yes. long time ago. And, however, successfully mass-produced in uh, 1851 in the United States. And I love my cheesecakes. Everybody, all my friends out there that know us, you know who you are. Cheesecake. You know me. Cheesecake every time, bro. Oh, yeah. Lisa looks at me. She goes, Mike, that's bad for you. I'm going, do you want your piece tonight? Good. I'll take her slice. <laughs> she, she gets too much cheesecake. She's like, take it. I grab it. Cheese can be produced in various ways by milking a cow, a buffalo. Wow. That sounds dangerous. Buffalo? I've heard heard of that. They put it in a ball. (coughs) Excuse me. Who wants to milk a buffalo? Come Uh, on. A goat? A horse? Better be tied up. Even a horse. I'm sorry. (laughs) I've never never heard that one before. That's a new one. You could just... Oh, wow. And even a camel. Okay. Okay. That's Cam- true. Camel milk. Oh, okay, that's another. Yeah. Oh, no idea. Only ten pounds of milk is required to make one pound of cheese, and that's why cheese gets expensive. That's right. And it doesn't stop there for the price point and why. Hey, and do you know how to make cottage cheese from milk? No, you're going to tell me though. Yeah, what? vinegar. It curdles it. Hmm. That's all it is. Cottage cheese is just. See, all milk. I care about right now when you say things like cheese. that to me, can you smoke it? That's all I care about. I just want to eat it. I know. Smoking is good, too. Yeah, you tell me. Yeah, it, it takes a lot because we've done that at yeah. home. We've taken milk, and we've added a little bit of vinegar, and it immediately kind of curdles. Wow. Because you see milk sometimes, you know, like in the milk pitcher. Mm, oh, yeah. And oh, it starts, that's true. It starts to curdle at the that's top. That's right. That's actually okay. Time to make some cheese. If the bad, Don't throw that bad milk out the sink. It's got its cheese. you got some cheese happening. That's right. That's right. Not. I'd rather buy it at the store and, as I said, smoke it. There's various uh, varieties of cheese. Of You've course. got a list, don't you? Oh, by the way, speaking of smoking cheese, everybody, hard cheeses are the best thing to smoke, Mike. Mike? What? Hard cheeses. As we say, we have the cheddar, we have the gouda, mozzarella is good for smoking, cold smoking, guys. There's two types of smoking cheese. You do a hot smoke or a cold smoke. I prefer a cold smoke. That's another story. Anyways, Monterey Jack. Brie, a lot of people like that brie with their wine and everything and some nice crackers or French bread. And then Swiss. And there's more. Hard cheeses in general. But that's 
basically the choices I make when I smoke a lot of my cheeses. And actually, the interesting part about mm -hmm. Swiss cheese, because Swiss cheese has all the little holes in it. Yeah, little cavity holes. They have they just cool. recently discovered that it's actually... Actually, you got the list over there? I do. Yeah. It actually the one was... one you threw at me. Yeah. Oh, did I? Yes. It was actually... Okay. Because they discovered that it was little bits of straw or hay that actually produces those holes. I don't know why... Why it doesn't... So it's, as they're curing in straw or hay, maybe? The little tiny, tiny yeah. particles. Cool. That's pretty bizarre stuff. All right. So what's next? Are we going to go ahead and show everybody the video and uh, yeah. tease so them up a bit with what I do and yeah. how I do it? So this is a video that uh, talks about smoking cheese itself. And yes. Smoking. And then uh, we're going to try some, and then we're going to mm. get into the rest of it. So there you Let, go. Let's do it. Enjoy, everybody. Welcome back to Barbecue Banter, everyone. Well, today we're going to teach you how to do some cold smoked cheese. Who likes smoked cheese? I know I do. I know my friends, family, and neighbors love it when I hand it out to them and they put it a little bit on everything. So let's get started. And another thing, too, is who wants to pay store bought prices on these smoked cheese? What I've done is I've purchased this is a piece of Gouda, some cheddar here. A 400 grams average price four dollars and fifty cents to five dollars and I've taken these and turned it into this beautiful smoked Gouda that's oh done back in August of last year and the great thing about this it's stored in your fridge properly it's gonna get stronger and stronger and better tasting as time goes on so let's get started as I said this is gonna take maybe two or three hours of your time and my time and in the end, this is the result. As you can see, I've taken the 400 gram bars that you saw earlier and cut them in half to 200 Great grams each, cheese or next. thereabouts. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I want the smoke to adhere to all sides of the cheese, and then the hour and a half key point is that I'm gonna flip them halfway through. Again, adhering smoke on all sides. Now, I do an hour and a half. It's up to you if you wanna go an hour, two hours, it's basically test as you go along and see how you like your cheese accordingly. And the other reason why I do that is that in our household, we only use about 200 grams per sitting in the fridge. The other 200 grams, as I said in the earlier video, is it gets stronger and stronger when it's sitting all vacuum sealed. So, hey guys, let's go out to the smoker and smoke some cheese because this is ready to go. In the end, I just want to point out I personally like to do this. Being up in Canada like we are is, I've picked up Temple's Sugar Bush Dark Maple Syrup. When all my cheese is prepped and ready to be packaged, I'm gonna coat this with some beautiful maple syrup because we love the taste here in our house. You can put whatever you want on it. I also wanna remind everybody is one important thing is, cheese has to be below 85 degrees Fahrenheit when you're smoking it or it's going to melt and ruin your whole process. So I suggest if it's warm today, for instance here, it's 14 degrees Celsius, about 60 Fahrenheit. It's perfect for me on a rainy day to do this. If your area is a little bit warmer, all I suggest is what I've done in the past on a warm day is take a big tray of ice. Put the tray in with your with your barbecue or your smoker, and it'll keep the cheese nice and cool while it's being smoked. Very important point. When you're smoking with pellet tubes, and as you can see, the smoke bellowing out of there, which is beautiful, it's gonna adhere great smoke. I'm using apple pellets. If you have a regular barbecue like this one over to my right, or any size at all, all I do for smoking cheese in one of these, instead of my big tall one, is I'll remove the grade, I'll put these bad boys, once they start smoking like this, at the very bottom of my grill. I'll put the cheese on the left-hand side. I, as I said earlier, go an hour and a half. You can go two hours, depending how strong you want your smoke on your cheese. From there, that's basically it, guys. I'm about to prep this cheese. Once it comes inside, I'm going to show you how to wrap it, store it, and <coughs> voila! You now have smoked cheese that's going to last you forever or at least for a few months, depending how fast you eat your cheese. We'll see you guys shortly, okay? Cheers. 
So here's the finished product. After an hour and a half, all those two hours, I kept this in the smoker. They came out beautifully. Now, keep in mind, coming out of the smoker, even on a temperature like today, there's a bit of moisture content on top and around the uh, cheese itself. I usually just take a paper towel and then I pat them dry. And I continue to do this. Now, I might even lay paper towels over the top of it. The other thing to remember is that I try to bring them to room temperature, leave them out for two to three hours before I vacuum seal them and put them in my fridge. Uh, one other point is that don't eat these for at least seven to 10 days. From coming out of the smoker, you'll get a very bad taste in your mouth and maybe a sore stomach. But after seven to 10 days, feel free to pull them out and have a bite and enjoy. Mark the date on them too. If you make as much cheese as I do, I like to go with the older dates and that way I know the cheese has gone past the 10 days and it's aged quite well, like this Gouda piece, as I mentioned earlier, that was done in August. And boy, these taste fantastic when they're a few months old. Anyways, that's about it for now. If you have any questions or comments, send them to us. And please, like and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, we'll go from there. We'll see you next time on Barbecue Banter. Cheers. Hey, 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 we're back. So I've, hopefully everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, that was Got right. a little bit of instruction. It's that simple, Mike, to make. It is. You, it you, is. You know, and it, it's it's amazing because you mentioned something about aging and mm -hmm. eating more. Of it. And the oh. first thing that popped into my mind, because I make my own booze. I have for a long time, Moonshine. Right. Yeah, Moonshine. And most of the flavor from Moonshine. That's why he's my buddy. Yeah. <laughs> comes from aging. Like literally, yeah. when we'll have a we'll have a, a neat show on, on Moonshine. Oh, I'd love point. that. I would love and that. The legalities behind that. But it's interesting because when, when it comes out of the still itself, mm. it doesn't have a lot of flavor at all. Right. And literally, like I've got stuff at home that's two years old. That's the best stuff right now. Right. So the aging part is so important for, for So that true. Well. Yeah. And it, just to add a little bit, I, I told everybody an hour to an hour and a half, depending on their flavor and how strong the smoke is. There's also, at the stores, I think you know this, you can uh, buy double smoked cheese. What? Double smoke it, and you'll see that at the super. They're, it's a lot more expensive. But what I'll do is once I've smoked a piece of cheese, and I've tried this, and I wanted to experiment, and I, I researched it, and once my cheese was smoked to a certain level of that hour and a half, I waited maybe half a day, put it back in my smoker, and smoked it even further, and just layer and layer of smoke. Now, for, again, a lot of people don't like strong smoked cheese. Right. I do with a good glass of wine. And... A little bit of everything. I was Pizza, just thinking we whatever we two in this show. Yeah, we should have had some wine here and crackers. Uh, uh, that was your job. Yeah. So that's that's <laughs> so that's double smoke. So you do it. Yeah. Then you redo it again. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Just a quick half hour or so. I add a little more smoke. Hey, but anyways, I got. I don't know. I mentioned before. Guys, we, before write we, it if you have any questions. Before we get the me. ceiling, uh, vacuum ceiling, and and a lot of the stats from the states, even though we're Canadian. Uh, it's interesting because the average uh, per capita person consumes, and I don't believe this, 34 pounds per person. I do. Like, and the French, they eat a lot of cheese. Their average is 57 pounds per person. Certainement, we love our cheese, là. 57 Oh, yeah. Pounds. Cheese, wine, French bread. That's the way I grew up. Yeah. That's a lot. Oh, I'm not saying cheese is as popular as bacon. But it's right up there in the top five. Oh, oh and we were talking about like facts in the first part. Mm -hmm. It's actually hay. It's, so what what they said is a Swiss laboratory has found that uh, in fact tiny flecks of hay in the milk is what causes it to have those bubbles. And that's the whole purpose of hay being there. I Just, don't know. They want bubbles. Yeah, bubbles. So what are we doing now? Let's eat. Hey, let's eat. You start cracking it. I will. Break that so, seal, and uh, what, do we, what do we want? We want the Gouda. Yes. Yeah, this was done back in January. I, I love the lines on it. Well, you know what? That's why I brought this out to show everybody yeah. what is the best. Oh, nice echo. Vacuum. Sorry about that. Wait. 
The best yeah. vacuum um, Crack open plastic to vacuum cheese, seal, Mike. Right now. All right. Look at this. Smell that. As soon as I stop off the package. Oh, yeah. The smoke. What a beautiful, yeah. yeah, that flavor. Could you, let's pull this off there. We don't need that on the plate. There we go, my friend. Excuse my fingers. I'm just going to. I really want some wine. Look at this. Here you go, buddy. Grab that. Oh, look at Grab like, that. I know, hey, wobble, wobble. <laughs> it reminds me like, well, I'll go and say what's up. All right, hey, you ready? Hey. Yeah, you have first. You go ahead. Because I have to talk while you're eating, remember? Oh. Chew down. Oh, yeah, like the, the aroma from the cheese itself is remarkable. But, mm. like, we were joking around about the rubber mm. of the cheese. Mm. It's mm. it's not like, mm. so that is this frozen after? Never freeze your cheese. Never freeze your cheese. It's refrigerated only. You That's got a all big you're gonna fridge, do. you got a lot of cheese in it. I've got a mini fridge in the basement here oh, full of cheese. Okay. I keep lots of cheese on hand. Again, friends and family and neighbors always come over and I treat them. Mm. The amount of flavor in, mm -hmm. in the cheese itself is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like a secondary flavor too, the cheese you know, itself. It's always stepping up with flavors, you know. Making your hamburger out in the grill, put some smoked cheese on that. You made it, it's so simple. Right. Love it. Pizza. I put it in my salads. Everything. It's amazing. Amazing. Okay. So now we are mm -hmm. going to talk about vacuum sealing. Mm. Very important as well. Okay. Finish we may, eating excuse first. me. Excuse it's me. Fake, I always wait. do that. Wait. No. So you're rude. still doing it. Wait. Stop. <laughs> Chew for a swallow and then talk. I did. You know, sip. Oh, Lord. Good to go. Okay. Teach him new habits. Vacuum sealing. Now, I've gone through different uh, textures of vacuum sealers at the local stores and this and that. And I find, number one, they're expensive. Yeah. Keep talking. Now, a lot of your rolls that you guys are going out and buying at your local stores have a, a um, what do you call this, Mike, on this side with, with a, a grain. So that's a commercial grade on one side. Yeah. And you can feel the texture on this. And then the the other side of this, it's just a clear plastic. They're not as durable as that first side that I mentioned, yeah, right? Just watch your microphone. I know. But it's basically... Like, I'm sorry, Mike. You're like, hey, you know the, the vacuum seal when we're... <laughs> hey, this actually sounds kind of neat. All right, Mike. Indigenous. No. <laughs> but anyways, getting back on the subject... Zing. Squirrel. Um, squirrel. Squirrel. Uh, commercial grade, two rolls, and I'm just reading off of a monitor here because I buy it online versus the local stores. And the texture, uh, it's it's BPA-free, commercial grade, and I get 100 feet long, and my average price is twenty four ninety nine. getting back to the price a minute ago. Yeah. Whereas you'll get half the amount at your local stores, which I won't mention, and you're still paying 20 some dollars for a roll that's a lot less. Yeah, it's like normal stores. And it's not commercial grade. Yeah. Both sides are commercial grade. Okay. Now, so yes. this, this is kind of funny. Oh, I just whacked the microphone. When we first, before we started doing this airing, mm -hmm. I, like, I grabbed this and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what thickness this is. I think three right. mil, maybe. Yeah, you're close. You so look it up, it's the high. mill is 3.5 per side, total of 7 mils thickness. Yeah. And uh, fungi-proof, oxidation-resistant, mold-proof, insect-proof. I don't know why they mentioned insect-proof, but nothing gets inside of it. And, uh, yeah, it's it's moisture-proof. And these commercial grades will last seven times longer. And what I found, bottom line, Mike, when I'm using my vacuum sealer on the cheaper stuff I mentioned... It doesn't seal as well. With both sides being commercial grade, it vacuums so well, and that's what you want. It's and nice. then thus, your cheese lasts a lot longer, doesn't lose its seal on these, and it, and you can put them in the fridge for seven, eight months, and they get better every day and stronger for flavor. And that's the basis Let's of it. Let's just turn this on. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. New toy, a new toy. Hey, I say, little piggy, just to show people an example. Little piggy will use her 
Excuse me, little piggy. She's going to volunteer for this one. You grab her, Mike. Why me? I just want to show everybody how well. Come on, grab it. All right, let me open up. Which Let's side is it? Piggy talk. Yeah, no, little piggy. I gotta get this. What open does piggy first. talk? How do you start piggy? Okay. Wait, Come on, piggy. Wait, I'm gonna get inside there. It has to go in head first. It's important. Let's do way. head first, okay, piggy? Wait. I know everybody at home. Let's vacuum does seal, not baby. like. I don't care if it's a teddy bear. Let's push her down there. All right, let's push her down there. Okay, Mike. I'm getting. I up. need to move this plate out of the way. Here we go. One second before you. Bang. And there she goes. You'll be okay. You'll be able to breathe. Click <laughs> turn sideways. Okay. Oh, we're still going. There she is. She's getting sucked in. Yeah, you can see the, the, the lack of size. Oh my God, Piggy, you'll be okay. We're gonna let you out in a minute. You might have to. Closer. Can everybody see that at home? Poor see. little piggy. This Look at her eyeballs. Where? Where? She's on the other side. You can't see her. We should have put her flipped around. But the lighting is not appreciated. I know. Well, she she was well, sealed, she but she didn't sealed. seal all the way. But let's save her. Come on, let's pull her out. Put her back. <laughs> Poor little piggy. There she is. Twang. There she is. Sorry, piggy, but thank you for your volunteer, for being a volunteer. Anyways. The great thing about it is I vacuum seal, you know, my meat, uh, my brisket, my pork, and my cheese, and whatever else I can vacuum seal. And it's not that expensive, not at all, especially when you pull it out months later on anything I just mentioned, and yeah. it's fresh just like it came off the grill or out of the smoker. Love it. Love it. Okay, Mike. I'm just looking at here. What, uh, what's that? I have no idea. See the... We, we changed our stuff around, so it, the monitor used to be on that side, not on this I side. I know. Mike I know. gets to look across, which is really I know. Difficult. I'm like, son of a gun, man. I'm so confused easily. Wow. Okay. So, uh, we're going to show the teaser for Gus. Oh, guys. Oopa. Yes. Oopa. You ready? Yep. Let's do it. What a beautiful day. A great day, I tell you, Mike. Great day. <laughs> What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Let's go for a road trip. Yippee ki yay! Manoli. Manoli. Calare, mama. Hey. 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 The secret recipe to salad dressing is what I want to call it, right? Yeah. We're back. Peace. Anyways, so that was our cheese segment, Mike. Yeah. It was a good yeah. good 30 minutes. Hey, guys, I know I mentioned it a few minutes ago. Write in. Text us on uh, YouTube or on my Facebook channel. And uh, we'd love to answer all your questions. Right, buddy? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we'll go from there. Perfect. Is that it? That's a cheesy show. I love it. I'm going to eat more well cheese done. after we well get done. off here. Yes. Pizza tonight. All right, brother. Cheese on. Peace, everybody. Enjoyed it.